So I would like to introduce Robin Schott and Kimberly Glenn. Kim is our Director of School <coughs> Engagement for Iowa and Nebraska. And Robin is the Area uh, Director for what are you, mid Midwest? Or? Uh, West Central. West Central region. Right. I get the That's regions mixed up. Thank so. you. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Great. Good morning. Well, Sally, thank you. Um, we're so uh, excited to be here today and so fortunate to have partners like the University of Nebraska in helping us do this work. Um, so we'd like to do a quick overview this morning. And for those of you that have been a part of Project Lead the Way um, for a long time, just tremendous changes with our organization. Um, as uh, Sally mentioned, we've you know, uh, embraced this whole idea of K-12 pathways, which is new if you remember when Project Lead the Way started. We were very much, um, very much a high school engineering program. So we've really um, broaden that perspective, but let's just jump in. Uh, as we think about the world and we think about um, the constant change, the, the changes in the workplace, I think the thing that's foremost on our mind on a daily basis is really how do we prepare students? How do we engage them in different ways? How do we excite them? How do we uh, motivate them? And so we have an intense curriculum team really um, top of mind every day and thinking through that piece and I think that's where we're starting to see this incredible engagement piece. So our goal is to always uh, not only engage them, but how do we inspire them and how do we motivate them? How do we help students understand that it's okay to fail um, and that that's a, learning, a part of the learning process? But the empowerment of students, I'm always amazed as I walk into some of our classrooms and we get to do that on a, on a weekly basis, but students don't even look up. I mean, it's incredible that they're so engaged in the work and it's sometimes almost an imposition if you ask them what they're working on because they're so intense on their projects and what they're doing. But total engagement um, when you walk into a Project Lead the Way classroom. So as I mentioned, a, a huge shift in focus for us in that we started out as very much an engineering curriculum. And now we have uh, three pathways, K through 12. So at the elementary piece, the middle school and the high school. I'd like to walk you through those programs, but um, <coughs> amazing growth as I mentioned. So this year we're in over 8,000 schools. We have over 9,000 programs in those schools. So multiple schools embracing multiple programs. We're in every state in the country, uh, also US territories. And a really huge milestone for us in working with partners like the University of Nebraska. Last summer we trained over 10,000 teachers really in that whole idea of project problem-based learning. So a tremendous milestone for us in, in that experience. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I'm gonna email it. okay. So we talked a little bit about the engaging classroom. So we do really embrace this uh, project problem-based learning component. Um, you'll see te students using technology, you'll see te student teams working in teams, um, problem solving, really um, very much the teachers are facilitators and not um, the sage on the stage and that's a piece that they really um, work through at the summer training opportunities. So I'd like to show you just a really short video that sort of captures that spirit mm -hmm. of engagement and original student work. Oops. Project Lead the Way gives us this opportunity to take a class that doesn't just focus on tests and quizzes and grades. It's more this ability to work independently to develop a product that is, in the end, unique to your own design and unique to your own imagination. Project Lead the Way classes are better than any of the classes that I have ever taken. It actually applies. The work, the field I'm going into, everything that I learned in the project with the class of the class of work I'm going to do. For me, it's my foundation. It allowed me to get to where I am now, and I look back at the opportunities that it presents for the students. It's just grown enormously over the you know, past few years. It gives these students a foundation and base to, to start here and then grow exponentially. We can absolutely tell when new engineers come into our company, <coughs> the, the kids who have been through programs like this versus the kids who haven't. The more kids that are involved in this curriculum, the more kids that are doing innovative problem solving, I think the better student body we have. Okay. 
short video clip just to sort of capture that spirit. I was in classrooms on Thursday and Friday of last week and was in an engineering ADD classroom and had an opportunity to talk to seniors that were really engrossed in their projects that had spent a whole year really working on their projects. It was a class of about 30 seniors and in that class of 30 seniors there were four teams that had already applied for provisional patents and walked me through their process. So just incredible engagement and original work um, in that piece. I also talked to a bioscience student who had completed all four courses of bioscience. She had done AP Chemistry and AP Bio. Uh, first generation college going student, she actually didn't even live with her parents, so she was living with a, a family member and talked to her and she had applied for a full ride at Vanderbilt and she had never been to that university but had applied for one of their scholarships. She scored a 35 on her ACT. Um, just amazing commitment I think and vision for what she could do and so I think the um, incredible opportunity with Project Lead the Way is not only to inspire students to do this original work and to embrace the idea of teaming and creativity and innovation like Sally talked about, but also to give them the tools to be able to be successful in that work. So I'd like to walk you through the programs and um, sort of talk about each one. So Project Lead the Way launch is definitely our newest program. It's our elementary program. We've only been in this space a little, uh, less than two years. Piloted the year before that with only 40 schools, about 42 schools nationally. And we're in over 1,700 schools this year. So um, uh, great adoption, very early adopters. And I think a lot of the schools that had been using Project Lead the Way, the middle and high school level, were quickly uh, early adopters of this program. Launch is extremely flexible in that schools can offer one module, one grade level, uh, and start there. But we have 24 modules, uh, four modules for each grade level, K through 5 two engineering, a bioscience, and a computer science module. It totally um, challenges students in activities, projects, and problems. Um, probably the most exciting piece for me is that we've really been able to, uh, to expand the teacher training piece. So we encourage schools to have lead teachers at the launch level. They send those teachers to a three-day three training and they learn how to go back to their building and really empower other teachers. So with the flexibility of how this can be offered, sometimes in schools, those lead teachers, actually all students rotate through their classrooms and they provide the launch training. But in some schools where we really see them moving the mark on changing the culture of their school around project problem-based learning, those lead teachers have gone back and they've trained every teacher in the building. So it's typically a six to eight hour professional development where those teachers learn how to do project problem-based learning and then there's online support for them at their specific grade levels. So we've been able to really move the needle. I was working with the district um, just earlier last week and they had four elementary schools and in a very short time they had 67 teachers up to speed and really utilizing the content and it was changing the way those students were learning in that classroom. So just incredible success with launch. Um, again, as I mentioned, very flexible in how folks are delivering. Some are doing after school programs. Uh, some are doing totally all students, all teachers, and then we have some that are doing STEM labs with um, students rotating through. So a very flexible model, but I think very critical. As Sally mentioned the importance of early childhood and getting to students early, and uh, a lot of our research really pans out that uh, especially female students make decisions very early, second and third grade, that they aren't good at math and science. So I think we're really tackling that um, with the launch piece and we're really empowering those students to understand that they, um, that they can be successful and they can use that content and, and have a lot of fun with the learning piece. So Gateway is our middle school component. We've had Gateway for a long time. I think the exciting thing about the transition of Gateway is that we started out with four very traditional engineering modules at the middle school piece. We now have 10 different modules for Gateway um, and we introduce all three pathways. So a lot of flexibilities in how schools implement. Uh, our Gateway units were designed as nine week units, but I know a lot of our schools use each unit as a semester, um, so there's tons of content there. But uh, again, we have the traditional engineering modules, but we have a medical detective unit where students actually do some dissection and it's a beautiful entry into the high school bioscience pathway. We have two computer science um, modules now, Introduction to Computer Science 1, Introduction to Computer Science 2. 
So it really, um, so many states now are talking about the idea of computer science for all students and uh, the critical need for that. So this middle school piece is really key, I think, in helping schools get, get started on that pathway. So again, uh, teachers do a little bit more intense training with Gateway. And, but there's tons of flexibility with that too. So one of the changes that Project Lead the Way has recently announced is just the flexibility of how you offer these modules. So we used to encourage schools to really start with automation, robotics, and design and modeling. Um, sort of rethinking that now with the three pathways. So the design and modeling course has totally been redesigned for this fall. So teachers coming to training this, this summer will have a brand new uh, content and course and that we're introducing all three pathways through that course. So the design and modeling will introduce bioscience, computer science, as well as engineering. Um, so it's still a great foundational course, and that's how we used to turn those two courses with specialty. Um, but now a lot of flexibility in how schools are implementing. So if you're a bioscience school and just want to do medical detectives, that's great. If you're really trying to build out a computer science pathway for K through 12, you can just do the ICS. Um, and then if you want to introduce students to a lot of different STEM opportunities, then design and modeling is a great first course and then building your pathway um, with multiple other electives. So tons of opportunities with Gateway. Again, the training uh, ranges from uh, a week on many of the courses to a three-day training on some of the specialty areas. So a lot of diversity in how teachers can be trained. Computer science is our, our brand, our newest <coughs> high school pathway. Uh, it actually started as a specialty course within engineering. So computer science software engineering was the first course developed. And it really was meant to introduce our engineering students to this whole idea of computational thinking and computer science. Um, that course was designed and written to AP computer science principles framework. So that was a brand new framework that the College Board was working on. We had access to that framework. We developed our course around project problem-based learning, and the intent was that that course would be uh, a part of specialty within engineering. Quickly, the conversation escalated, I think, at the national level. Um, our partners really talked about the need for more students doing computer science at a much earlier age. So now with the K through five modules, the two modules at middle school, we've developed a pathway with um, an introduction to computer science uh, for high school, computer science principles, which is uh, a college board framework course, computer science A, our applications, which is again a, a college board framework course, and then a cybersecurity course. So the great thing about this is that students will actually be engaged in a very rigorous computational thinking challenge much earlier. Uh, as we've looked at data nationally, um, less than 1% of high school students were really taking an advanced computer science course. And um, again, the diversity that Sally mentioned was uh, missing. So not a lot of female students were doing that and not um, a lot of underrepresented students. So our goal again with the pathway is to get those students really excited about the opportunity and um, help them see that uh, see those opportunities. But I think even with the students who were traditionally taking computer science, waiting until a junior senior year to do that really sort of limited as you know the depth of knowledge for them. So we're excited that hopefully we can get students as early as freshman year in an AP computer science framework course. Students can actually sit for our exam or an AP exam or both, and um, hopefully we'll have uh, a large talent pool uh, in the next few years around computer science. So we're very excited about that opportunity. And you know, as I've just had discussions with a lot of our stakeholders, especially our corporate partners, I'm amazed at the different industry sectors that this impacts. So we kind of have this vision of computer science and who needs computer science. But honestly, financial institutions have a huge need. I was working with Community Bank in Kansas City not long ago, told me that they alone needed 400 programmers. They, you know, were a national chain, but um, Walmart, I was in Northwest Arkansas the other day, they have a, a need for 600 programmers at Walmart. So it's just incredible need and lack of talent in the computer science area. So I think tons of opportunities for students as, um, as we start to encourage high school students to, and elementary and middle school to embrace computer science. 
so engineering is definitely our most uh, our legacy program I would say um, we have nine courses at the high school level now for engineering again flexibility so we've really opened up our engineering pathway so we used to say that schools had to do at least a minimum of three courses and they had to start with the two foundational courses or we recommended that they did IED and principles of engineering and now as we've listened to communities and listened to partners um, we know that we need to be more flexible, especially for um, rural schools or uh, just tons of situations where a three-course sequence might not be um, doable. So we have schools that do seven or eight of these courses, and they do it in, um, you know, in conjunction with strong math and science always, but tons of flexibility now in how you can offer these nine courses. So we still have the two foundational courses. We still know the benefit for students when they transition through a program or a sequence of those courses, but um, a lot of flexibility in how you can do that. So if I'm a school and I'm in an aerospace community, I can start with aerospace. So just a lot of flexibility in how you offer these courses. But again, IED POE are the foundations. We have the new computer science software engineering course. We have um, aerospace, computer integrated manufacturing, uh, a brand new course called environmental sustainability. So we're one year into that course, but just seeing tremendous results. And we're seeing that course is very attractive to female students. So a lot of girls um, are sort of drawn to that whole idea of environmental sustainability. And then our capstone course. Biomedical, um, again, tremendous results for students. This is a strong science sequence. There are four courses, and when those courses were designed, they were written sequentially for students to transition through. So the first course, Principles of Biomedical Science, really reinforces an, uh, about 60% of a Strong Biology One course. So a lot of overlap, but we see students really excelling in that whole uh, arena of bioscience with this sequence. The second course is a human body course, so very complementary to A and P that some schools already have in place. Medical interventions is the third course. It's really a strong micro course. Uh, as an old biology major, it's probably my favorite course, and that students are doing a lot of small science in that course. And then um, cellular level science. I'm sorry. And then uh, a bio innovations course. So we're seeing some great original research um, in the in the BI course. A lot of different ways students can go with that course it's very flexible but again tremendous results especially when you um, pair those courses with a strong science sequence as well so biology chemistry physics we totally recommend um, schools offering and encouraging students to do both but once they do just tremendous opportunities open for them so biomedical science so I think um, we have a couple of pictures just of our, so we just finished our national summit last week and it was an incredible experience. We always invite student teams into that event and they get to talk about their incredible work. So actually this project was from our national teacher of the year last year. He um, teaches EDD in Miami. His students really engaged with an orphanage in Haiti before actually the earthquake, but that orphanage didn't have clean water. And so really challenged his students to develop a system for them that could be a water filtration system. So when the students started on that project, they created the water filtration system, um, had a call from the orphanage. Uh, they, uh, it was just a really sad case in that they didn't have um, children there any longer. And so um, the students sort of disengaged a call a few days later after the earthquake and then there was just this tremendous need then for water filtration but it needed to be off the grid so the students really took the challenge uh, sort of without the teachers knowledge went home and worked independently for a week and came back and said we figured out how to do this we can take the water filtration system off the grid and they provided that for the orphanage in Haiti so it was a, a wonderful story they now have these uh, water filtration systems in multiple villages in South Africa and just tremendous entrepreneurial spirit for these students in a school in Miami so it's amazing what students can do when they engage in solving problems um, one of the other pieces that we wanted to highlight is our, these two students were from Kansas City and sometimes this teacher was the first to admit he didn't think this project had much merit in that they were really challenged with the uh, ketchup lid and how you know um, 
water and ketchup separate and anyway the challenge that they put out was designing a new ketchup lid and it totally went viral so these kids did a great job they were on late night TV it was a crazy story but they did design it they've been they were invited that year as seniors to the National Plastics Convention to really show their piece and uh, so they've continued on so it's amazing how students really uh, our EDD capstone project and then also BI, we really focus on how do we get students engaged in a problem that they want to solve. And then once they engage, it's amazing the things that they accomplish. So a great story, sort of two very different stories, but um, our students are doing amazing work. Thank you. So, so yes, from third world problem solving to our first world catch up issues that we're having. <laughs> I know. Um, they are, they are t stepping up and taking that. Uh, taking it to heart and doing something about it. So we've talked about sort of the Project Leadway programming. We've talked about some student experiences that they have. And I think now it's a great time to talk about one of the most uh, essential components of Project Leadway, and that's really the teachers. And it's about getting those teachers involved. Um, and our goal is to provide them with the support and the resources that they need to inspire their students to the next level. So with our Project Lead the Way professional development, it comes in uh, three phases, if you will. They are readiness training, core training, and ongoing training. And the, the readiness training is a piece that happens before you actually go to the face-to-face -face trainings that are, are in existence. And that really prepares the teachers to see kind of what, how the technology is going to work. It gets them into our learning management system. It allows them to uh, get a hold of that software, take some looks at that, uh, upload it onto their computer so it's more streamlined when they do get to the face-to-face -face core training component. So it gives them a sense of um, security that they, they know what they're going into and they feel prepared to do so. Um, along with that readiness, there are a lot of resources that are provided to them. Uh, before they actually set foot into the core training. So core training is actually um, one that is, is held at over 60 affiliate universities across the United States, as well as with some of our business and in industry partners, as well as um, in some school districts holding these core training sites. And these core training sites are um, imperative. Uh, they, they provide an atmosphere of support from not only the master teacher that, that actually does the teacher training, and I'll back up just a second with master teachers. Master teachers are our Project Lead the Way teachers that have taught a, a particular course for a number of years, and then they get special training by Project Lead the Way. There's an application process. They get special training then to, for master teachership, and then they are then um, hired by our affiliates to provide that training to teachers uh, locally, regionally. Um, and some of the fa most fantastic uh, professional development I've heard from many teachers that say that this is some of the best professional development that they've ever had. This is not your sit and get. This is definitely a rigorous um, uh, piece that takes you through um, the activities and projects and problems that your students are going to be facing. And one um, interesting uh, component is in when we do our administrative days at these core trainings where we're kind of getting the teachers or the administrators to understand what their teachers are going through. Um, one, one thing was that um, these teachers are kind of put out of their comfort zone. Um, this is not something that they're used to. It's a, it's a bit different. So the administrators actually um, like that aspect because they not all, they know now kind of what those students are going to be feeling come fall. So they, I think, have a better appreciation when they go in uh, with their new curriculum and, and start that program up. The last phase really with the ongoing uh, is the ongoing training. And with ongoing training, they are, um, again, supported with resources to where, where, whether it's video um, links or peer-to-peer um, -peer learning that's going on or if there's an update into some curriculum, um, we provide that ongoing training as a, a, a support system to that teacher and to keep going with that professional development so they don't stop learning um, with that. Um, I had a teacher tell me, he, it was a 30-year-old uh, gentleman, 
He was in Introduction to Engineering Design, the first course actually in uh, the uh, engineering pathway. And it was at the end of the two weeks uh, of rigorous training, and he said that he just doesn't know where he would be today had he had Introduction to Engineering Design when he was a ninth grader, which is using Autodesk Inventor 3D modeling software. And it made me really think about that, that um, you know, we're affecting these young people's lives early, and who knows where this information can take them, this curriculum, this background, this support. So fantastic opportunities through, through um, Project Lead the Way professional development. So these teachers are learning to facilitate, coach, and really be comfortable with these roles. So I'm going to show you a quick one-minute video on and hearing it from some of the teachers themselves. You always think of summer professional development and you're kind of like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be on that email, just kind of be ignoring them because it's going to be all this information that's just kind of given and given and given. But we were actually doing the activities, we were actually, they were very well programmed, very well organized. In this training, we really do try to immerse the teachers in the curriculum. It's more intense, but I think it's more meaningful because the teachers are able to do the hands-on experiences. People are not lecturing at you. They are guiding you through the curriculum. People leave having an experience that you don't get in most trainings. This platform is the best that I've ever experienced in preparing you to teach something to someone else. You come here with all of that vast experience that you want to make available, and at the same time, you come with an open mind to learn. You can help it, but at the end of the training, you walk away satisfied in both ways.